Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Piano Etudes course here at Liberty Park Music. For the next couple of lessons, we're going to be looking at a few pieces by the Austrian composer Karl Czerny, um, who's known today as much as anything for his still popular teaching pieces, but also for being one of Beethoven's most successful students. Now, Czerny went on to become a teacher himself, tutoring some of the greatest pianists of his day, including Stephen Heller and Sigismund Klauberg and the eminent piano superstar Franz Liszt. Now, in a bit of a change of pace from the first couple of lessons that we looked at in this course, um, instead of looking at weaving counterpoint lines, we're going to shift gears and look at one of the more classic piano textures out there, which is to have a melody or melodic content in your right hand, or, and chords or chordal accompaniment in your left hand. Um, and we're going to stick with this theme for the next several lessons. Um, it, like I said, it's one of the most common types of piano texture, so it is worth it for us to get used to it. So, let's give a listen to this piece. So a lot of piano music is about hand positioning. When we're just starting off, it's best to think of your hands as being in various five finger close positions, which I mentioned in an earlier lesson. And we're talking about things like C position, G position, or F position. And even if we, you're not really thinking in terms of the scales associated with these positions, for example, um, F position, when we're in the C major scale is missing the B flat we'd be using if we were using the F major scale. That aside, it's still very useful to have a clear, broad idea of where our fingers are going to be when we're playing. And thinking of positions is probably the best way to do this early on. Now, that being said, one of the challenges we face once we get into playing is that the music often doesn't conform entirely to that positioning. Usually you'll have to go a little in one direction or another, and part of the evolution of difficulty in piano music is that we end up getting wider ranges of notes we have to take into account based on a given position. So for example, if we're in a seat position, we might initially be able to pretty much stick to it with maybe a little reach down to B or up to A every so often, but as we get better and get into more complicated music, the range of that position expands and eventually we come to think of a much wider range of notes as being part of considering that one position. And the why and how of this are not really topics for this lesson, but I think it's good for you to have a little perspective going into this. Okay, so back to our first measures of this piece. We've got the left hand in C position, um, playing a C major chord on middle C, and the right hand also in C position. Um, don't let that first G in the right hand confuse you. We always think of our positions as being from top to bottom, or I'm sorry, from bottom up. So whatever the lowest note is, um, is what we want to focus on which is where paying attention to the fingering becomes important. So let me play these first four bars for you again. So our right hand stays in position here. We don't reach for any notes or have to play any notes other than those that are directly under our fingers in the five finger close position. But our left hand has to reach down to this B and D in uh, the third measure. Now this motion is one you will encounter a lot, and we're actually going from playing a regular position C major chord to a different position of a G major chord. Um, but don't worry if none of that makes sense to you. Just work on getting familiar with the motion and of thinking of that bottom skip of the chord moving down and then back up. Like that. So just practice that by itself a few times. 
Now, really quick before we move forward, take advantage of the very regular repeating rhythm happening here to be very clear about your beats and timing. Um, we have two eighth notes connected to three quarter notes, so I really do recommend that even if you feel like it's easy, take a moment and just play that rhythm away from the keyboard, either by clapping or snapping or singing against a steady beat like a metronome. So like this. Da 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 make sure that's nice and clear even if it seems easy it will help later on trust me thanks for watching this lesson from liberty park music if you enjoyed this lesson and learned something from it do us a favor hit that like button and if you really liked it share it around let your friends and family check it out too if you want to find more lessons like this or explore other piano related topics please come visit us at libertyparkmusic.com we have full piano courses ranging from beginner to more advanced levels, and everything is online and streaming 24-7 so that you can design your music learning around your schedule and learn in the comfort of your own home from a talented roster of professional teachers and musicians. Come check us out.